Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everybody. It says I am live. So I am here with you opening up the chat right now. Uh, want to see who's here. Come on, you guys. Give me a hello so I can see who's here. Want to do some shout outs. Tell me where you are. Uh, so happy to be here, guys. So excited. Tonight is a big night. We're talking about courage because frankly, if you don't know how to step out of your box, you don't know how to create something new. And, you know, it's like I keep saying, in order to have something you've never had before, you've got to do things you've never done before. So you really have to do some things that are going to make butterflies start up in your stomach. And I want you to know how to handle that. I want you to know what it is. Uh, Deanna says, hi. Sherry says, hi. We got some Kitchener ladies here. Awesome. Uh, I want you, Kim. Hello, Kim, Kim, Kim. Uh, could be here tonight. Hello, Nina. Nina in Houston. Love it. Love it. Who else we got? Oh, okay. We got all four ladies here. Awesome. Good. I hope you have some pen and paper handy, ladies, because uh, we got some good lessons going on tonight. So I hope that you are ready. I'm going to get right into it and put up the slide presentation. Some of you remember last time that we had a little bit of trouble with that, but not this time. This time we got everything going on. Um, before I start, just give me a confirmation. Is the sound okay? Is the image okay? Are you guys good? I want to know that everything is good for you. Um, and, and I just want to make sure that everybody's happy, happy, happy. And I'm going to pop out this slide presentation. I'm going to put up my little zoom in preference because it's so cute because it gives you options for the slide presentation. Like, how do you want it to look when it goes from one slide to the next? I'm like, zoom it, baby. So we're going to pop this up. I'm putting the chat back up. Uh, yes, Kim in Stratford. Um, so ladies, let me know if there are any difficulties. Deanna says good and good. Uh, you might notice it's a little bit, image is slightly blurry, but sound is fantastic. Yeah, ladies, you know why? Because it got this beautiful little microphone here that I bought just for you to make sure that I was giving you guys the best quality that I could. You might notice the background is a little bit different. Uh, Sherry, good and good because I'm actually sitting in my husband's office tonight. Uh, I'm sitting on the prettier side of it, but um, because <laughs> my husband works in like a, a metal shop, but we have the house and the shop on the same property. So it was just basically like me walking my stuff over and uh, I'll be walking back home after this. Um, but he's got like two internet feeds coming in and one of them is a little bit faster than the other. And I only have the one at the house. So I came in and plugged in on his faster internet. So hopefully the, you know, it's, it's not as choppy as it was last time, but I did notice last time when I watched the replay that the sound always, I would say 98% of the time was pretty fantastic. So let's get this party started. So you are going to increase your courage and open more doors. Now, for those of you who might be here for the first time, Chantal Hyde, Canada's dating coach. I've been uh, doing this for the longest time, but I branded myself uh, only the last four years because I literally ran out of people to help and it hurt. And I needed to keep this going, so I branded a business. Um, and once I did that, I just had all these books that just rushed out of me. I've written eight books. Um, and my website now gets over 2,000 hits a day because there are so many questions about love, dating, relationships, soulmate experiences that you type into Google. And if I'm not on the first page, I am number one. Like if you type, when is the right time to ask if he wants a relationship? Guess who's number one? This girl. Um, what does this, you know, what, uh, what does a soulmate feel like? What does a spiritual relationship feel like? Why does a guy get cold feet? Pretty much number one. So really proud of that. I've put a lot of work into getting information out there and it is bringing the people in. Ladies, you are part of the beginning of a revolution, which is incredible. There's so much good stuff happening. Um, now I'm up to over 16,000 views on YouTube, over 2,800 downloads on iTunes. If you type in my name and you click on the news, you're going to see me popping up over like over and over again, page after page on Google. So 
you know, I know what I'm talking about. I'm getting attention for it and you are in on the ground floor, which is amazeballs. Um, so tonight we are talking about fear. And I wrote this in my book. When I wrote No More Assholes, I wrote fear is a drunk driver. Don't let it steer the wheel. And we tend to do this. We tend to be really reactive when we feel fear. Like I work with women who are afraid all the time. This is why they come to me because they're tired of letting fear steer their direction. And they come to me in fear and they're, they're afraid they're not going to find the one they're looking for. They're afraid to approach the one from across the room. They're afraid to leave the one who is not good for them. And fear can lead you down some very, very dark corridors. And I want to work with you to help you overcome that, to help you understand what fear is so that it's a lot easier to manage and a lot easier to work through and get through. But understand, it is your enemy when it comes to choosing your behaviors. It will not steer you in the right direction. Every time you feel afraid and you're deciding a course of action and you're choosing the one that is guided by fear, I want these words to go through your head and I want you to change your mind. Fear is a drunk driver. Ladies, would you get in the car with a guy who had too much to drink and was stumbling around? You're too smart for that. But fear is a drunk driver. And if you let it steer your direction, if you let it drive you to where you want to go, there's a chance you will not make it because it may crash with you inside. And I don't want this to happen to you. I want you to make choices that are based on courage because yeah, you're going to shit your pants. I'm not lying. Like I had a poo my pants, you know, a couple weeks ago, a poo my pants decision, right? To invest tens of thousands of dollars back into my business. And I did, but I, let me tell you, it was a scary decision to make, but it will get me further than where I am today. And that's what I want you to realize is those scary decisions, the ones that take courage will get you further than where you are today. Okay. So let's get started. So here's what you're going to learn, how to use your body to increase courage, because really like, you know, fear is a chemical reaction, but so is courage. So you can, you can let the fear trickle from your brain into your body and freeze you up, or you can move your body and really communicate up to your brain that, you know what, you're going to bypass this reaction and your brain will follow suit. That's going to be one of the lessons tonight is what you decide ultimately will help you break through this discomfort of fear that you're experiencing. I'm going to teach you how to start a conversation anywhere. I'm going to teach you how to flirt with any guy. And I'm going to teach you how to do it again because those moments are going to be scary, but I'm going to teach you how to repeat it over and over until they're not so scary. I'm going to help you train the fear out of you. Okay. So, Let's start with a little bit of why you need to get over your fear in order to find that soulmate experience that you're looking for. So this is what we typically do as women. We're kind of coy with our flirtation. And, and there's kind of a mistake that we do over and over when it comes to men is we say to ourselves, he should know. And we do this early on. We do it when we're smack dab in the relationship and we do it when we're breaking up with somebody going, he should have known. But men can't read our minds. And it's kind of funny because my husband and I, we'd have a fight, like my ex-husband actually, we'd have a fight and then we'd realize that the fight afterwards had nothing to do with what we actually fought about. Somebody was grumpy, somebody was hungry, somebody was tired, or somebody miscommunicated. And and we'd, we'd kind of get through the fight, we'd be on the other end and we'd be like talking about what made us fight and then realize that somebody didn't clarify something. And this is what my ex-husband would say. He'd look at me and go, read my mind. <laughs> you know. And it was so funny because we cannot read each other's minds. But as women, you know, we are highly intuitive and we tend to think that people should just know because sometimes we just know, right? But we don't. This is what men need from us. This is how clear it needs to be. This is how the signal needs to come through. It has to be a red light at a traffic stop. Ladies, I want to ask you a question right now. 
Okay, and I want to get your feedback on this. Have you ever been in a room and seen a stranger or even someone that you kind of sort of know, you know, maybe they work in the same office or they're a friend of a friend, you know, and it's never somebody that you've had a conversation with. And have you ever looked at the person and been dying to start that conversation? Can you just give me like a, yeah, that's me, or hell yeah, or nope, I've always been able to approach somebody. Um, you know, I'm putting a poll up right now. I want to get you to click on that. Do you feel like you don't have the confidence to approach someone that you're interested in? So either yes, it sucks, or nope, I've got kahunas on my side, my friend. So where are you at? Like, what is it that you feel when it comes to approaching somebody? Can you do it? What is your, so Deanna says, yes. Sherry says, I, Sherry, I near, I near make the fish move. Sherry, you're gonna have to clarify that one for me, please. Uh, Nina says it depends. First, uh, would that say, I never make the first move, Sherry? Uh, Nina, what does that depend on? I want to get, I want to, I want to figure that out a little bit. What does that depend on? I'm very, it's very attractive. I get the butterflies in my stomach. Uh, and I get, okay, so, so the more you like him, the less likely you are to go up and talk to him. Ladies, is this, is this you too? Chime in here. Is it the more attracted you are to this person? Yes. <laughs> I love this. Right? Yeah. And what about if you go to a party, right? Just forget people that you're attracted to. Um, you know, what if you go to a party and the only person you know is the person who brought you? Uh, Kim, that's me. What if the only person who brought you is the person that you know? And once they leave your side, because obviously if they brought you to a party, they know other people there. So they're going to go mingle with other people. Once they leave you, do you find that you're standing there, you got the sweaty palms going, you've got the butterflies in your stomach, your mouth is dry, you're kind of shaking. Sherry says, you just say something silly. I'd love to see an example of that, Sherry. <laughs> love to see an example of that. Um, you know, are you... Are you the awkward person in the corner that's desperately hoping that somebody would come up and talk to you? Because I most definitely was. Nina, yeah, I feel like way too hot, lose confidence in myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sherry, waiting for you to tell me what is something silly that you've said. I think this is going to be good for all of us to see. Um, so now you guys see me as a public figure. Some of you have met me in person. You, you, you know, you know that I walk into a room and I'm not sweating it. I go up on stage and I'm not sweating it. I'm talking to strangers and I'm not sweating it. Uh, something self-deprecating. Sherry, uh, let me tell all of you ladies right now, never, ever, ever, ever say anything self-deprecating because what you were doing in that moment is being guy bait. Guys don't want you to have self-esteem. Guys don't want you to be confident because the less confident you are, the more you'll cling. And the more you cling, the more you accept, the more you downgrade what you should take. And they want you to be controllable because then they can keep you and they can have you when they want. And, and guys want what they want when they want it. And as long as they can keep you unstable and, and unsure, and always looking for validation, then this is kind of the way that they, they keep you around. They don't want you to be confident. And you'll notice with guys, if you've been in a relationship with a selfish short-term thinker, a taker rather than a giver, you will have noticed the moment you start to pull away and you start to get your feet and the moment you start to get confident is the moment they start to get angry because now they see you slipping away and they don't want that. Um, so Kim, the situation, total social butterfly chatting with everyone, including the lamp post. But when I see someone I'm interested in, I freeze. Nina agrees um, in the same way. Yeah. Okay. So, and I get that. I totally get that. Um, I used to not be able to approach anybody. I used to not be able to talk to anybody. Um, again, 
you know, putting myself in that situation where I'd be at a party and the person that I went with left and left me alone. And all I could do was just stand by the food or stand by the counter and just look at people and try to make eye contact and try to smile. And I could never open my mouth to start a conversation. I never knew what to say. And I was a wreck. I was literally just a ball of nerves and it was horrible. Uh, Sherry, I honestly don't know what to say. And that is what we are addressing tonight. Sherry, a bad habit, then I think it over all day long and <laughs> you're more aware of it now. And you are going to have some tools tonight, my friend. Ladies, you are going to know what to do to send that signal. You're seeing the slide right now. You're going to know how to send that signal. And at a party where it's just people and it's not necessarily somebody that you're attracted to, the signal is, I am open. I'm communicative, I'm intelligent, I'm fun, and you want to talk to me, okay? And when it's somebody that you're attracted to, the signal is my door is open, I am available, I am interested, and I do want you to pursue me. So I'm giving you I'm giving you courage to deal with two different situations, but you can use these tools with a little bit of a twist depending on each one. Yeah, <laughs> Sherry, that's right. Love the excitement. Love it. All right. So what the fuck is fear anyway, right? Me. I said that. I hope you guys enjoy that one. Anybody opposed to swearing, by the way, I need to know because I kind of let them fly and I know I shouldn't in a way because really like my long-term goal is like network TV. Like I really want to get out in front of the masses and I'm not, you know, sure how well they would judge me dropping swear words every now and then. Who knows? But I mean, it's me. I keep it real. Um, I, you know, try to keep it to a minimum. So let's get into the biology of fear, right? So let's understand what fear is because yes, I <laughs> keep it real. I love it. Love it, ladies. I love you guys. Um, so basically fear is, is an automatic response, right? We needed to have fear. Love your power language, Kim. Love you, Kim. We evolved about 200,000 years ago. We were cavemen and cavewomen living in a jungle. It was a much more dangerous world and we needed to understand what to do to survive. And so fear is an automatic response. It lets us know in the moment, it communicates in the split seconds. Do you fight this? Do you have the strength? I mean, if it's the brown bear, do you fight or do you run, right? And your fear response, that automatic response, is going to tell you what to do. And so it is what kept us alive. Fear is the reason you and I are here today on this webinar talking about fear. It has a natural place within us. And, and I'll give you like an example. You know, I started all this working with dogs and I studied dog psychology and it was, it was understanding like wolf psychology to understand dog psychology that brought me into people psychology because I saw all these parallels. And one thing that we'll notice about puppies is, you know, up to eight weeks, they're fully exploratory very, very exploratory. There's very little of a fear response. We take them home at eight weeks. There's a little bit of a fear response kicking in, but we have a four week window between eight and 12 weeks to socialize this puppy. So zero to eight puppy needs to stay with mom. Eight to 12, we can take the puppy away, bring it into our pack, but we still need to show it the world. It still needs to understand that people are safe. Cars, you know, as long as you don't run out into traffic, the sound of cars are safe. You know, thunder is safe. Houses are safe. You need to put it in all kinds of different situations because after 12 weeks, anything it comes in contact with, it has a fear response. And the reason for that was that up until 12 weeks, the pup stayed relatively close to the den. But after 12 weeks was when it would start to wander out into the world. So anything it was introduced to before 12 weeks was generally safe because the den area was generally safe, right? The other wolves would kill any predators that would have eaten the pups if it came too close. But once it gets beyond the den and that's after 12 weeks, now it's more mobile and it's bigger and it really has an urge to get out because now it needs to go hunt. So after 12 weeks, when it meets something new, then the instinct is, well, 
this is new, I should fear it because it might kill me, right? And that's where fear steps in with us too, is this is new and therefore I am uncomfortable because it might kill me. It's our lizard brain that says it might kill me. And you need to distinguish between reality and the emotion, that feeling. And you notice a lot of physical responses during fear, right? Like the heart starts beating hard, the stomach and knots. Maybe there's some shaking, there's some shortness in breath because you feel tight, you feel squeezed. Guys, I wanna see some feedback from you. What are some sensations that you have when you feel fear? Did I miss any? Did I get them bang on? Let me know. Like if I miss some, I want you to list them for me. What happens to you? Do you get a dry mouth? Uh, do you feel like there's a, is there a ringing in your ears? Like what are your physical responses to fear? Um, and if I've named them all, then just go bang on sister. Let me know what, how do you feel when you feel fearful? And these physical responses are caused by 30 chemicals that are released in your body. Heart rate shoots up, nausea, oh geez. Oh Deanna, that sucks. Yeah, Holly nauseated. Hi Holly, you're new. Good to see you, welcome, welcome. Um, what else, what else you guys? Yeah, so you know, like your your body goes, it goes into fight or flight mode, right? And that's what those 30 chemicals are. Um, fears like pounding heart and chest, short of breath, right? Like you have, you know, again, fight or flight is intense movement either way, right? And so you are filled with all these chemicals that, you know, mind goes blank. Yeah, not surprised there because you're supposed to be hyper-focused when it comes to fear because you need to focus in on the problem so you can solve it like that right away, fight or flight, survival. And so your body is filled with all these chemicals, all these responses, right? That pounding of your heart is putting more oxygen in your bloodstream so you can run faster and be stronger, right? That nausea could be because you're actually not doing anything and you have all these chemicals overwhelming your system going do something. And there's a cognitive dissonance inside of your system going on. Um, you know, brain freezes, we got another one of those, right? Hyper focus, right? Hyper focus. And so, you know, you really just get overwhelmed. Raquel, hi, Raquel. You get very overwhelmed. And so, is anybody here meditating? Because meditation helps with that fear response because it shrinks your amygdala. The amygdala is the part of your brain that is associated to fight or flight. And when the amygdala shrinks, your capacity to feel those responses physically shrinks within your body. So if, if, anyone is not meditating yet. And I know, I know, I was going to say, I know Sherry's meditating. High five, girlfriend. Kim, high five to you too. I know a couple of you are already on board. Deanna, yes. Oh, we got three out of seven. Let's see if there's more. Is anybody else meditating? Oh my God, I'm getting excited here. Okay. Listen, ladies, if you're not meditating yet and we got some ladies, can you, by the way, uh, Sherry, Kim, Deanna, let, write a little note to the other ladies here in the chat. Tell them, the change that you've had since you started meditating from, oops, I got so excited, from, you know, what it was, what your, what your emotions were to how you're feeling now that you're meditating, okay? Because let's see, oh, Kong, uh, walking meditations, Kim, fantastic. Let's see if we can encourage these other four ladies to start meditating tonight, okay? Um, so teach them, Lily, hola, love it. Uh, so if you're not meditating yet, go to my YouTube channel, or if you don't know where it is, then go to YouTube, search Chantal Hyde. You're going to find my YouTube channel and click on playlist. You're going to find my Let's Meditate playlist. Now, the first video is a two minute tutorial. Listen, ladies, don't think meditation is hard. You have a vagina. The hardest thing about meditation is you thinking you need to clear your mind. Forget about that. You don't. All you need to do is pull your brain back to the space right in front of your eyes every time you realize you're off in thought. That fraction of a second that you're there, if that's, you know, if all it lasts is a fraction of a second, that fraction of a second shrinks your amygdala. You're going to go off in thought again. You're going to pull it back when you realize you're off in thought. Again, a further shrinkage of your amygdala. 
right? Every time you bring it back, you're going to shrink your amygdala a little bit more. I say to people, don't worry about how much you think. Give it the time because the music that I put on this playlist, they're binaural beats. And by the way, really go for the Rich Pendlebury music, which is the first stuff that's on my playlist because this guy is the crack cocaine of meditation music. He makes it so well. He is the chemist of meditation music. It is the best music. I'm hooked, absolutely hooked. Sherry from Headaches, 99% less anxiety, better handle of when it creeps in, uh, from a constant state of anxiety, tension, headaches all day, every day to no headaches. I am so super proud of you. And let me tell you, uh, <clears throat> Sherry went from 10 minutes a day. Are you still doing 20 minutes a day, lovely? You were saying last time you're doing 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night, uh, day and night, difference in my gray matter. Just do it. Yes, 100%. Thank you for your feedback on that. Thank you. Um, so basically, don't worry about how much you think. Just bring the focus back over and over again. Sherry, please tell them how easy it is because as long as you keep doing it, as long as you start with the minimum of 10 minutes a day, right? So the first track is a 10 minute love signal. Start with minimum 10 minutes a day. Go up if you want, but at least do 10 minutes a day. If you skip a day or two, make up the time, right? So you meditate today, but you didn't tomorrow, you didn't the day after. The day after that, you do 30 minutes because you've accumulated. You need to catch up to your time so that you're going to do that shrinkage of your amygdala. You're going to get this relief from this anxiety. Uh, Nina, watch your videos in the 10 minutes. We're good. 20 minutes, very difficult, hard towards the end, start to wander off. That's okay. That's okay, lovely. Just do as long as you can, as long as the minimum is 10 minutes. Uh, exactly, Sherry. It's easy if you don't worry about clearing your mind. You know, this, we're women. We have multitasking brains. I do not expect the unreasonable from you. Just give it the time. Um, so here's the thing. So that physical response, right? That um, your amygdala going, bloop, you know, blowing up and having that response, releasing all those chemicals in your body. I call it the sphincter clench moment, right? And you guys, like, you, <laughs> Do you know, I hope you, listen, if you don't know what a sphincter is, go look it up. I'm not telling you right now. And, and it just freezes you and it keeps you immobile and it keeps you from moving in the direction that you want to go in, which is towards the love interest that you are interested in, right? And if anything, it keeps you walking in the opposite direction or it keeps you staying with the bad ex. It keeps you making the safer decisions because you're afraid of what you haven't experienced yet. You're, you're that, that under socialized puppy. And, and I want you to understand that what is beyond fear is not as scary as you think it is. And I'm going to give you some tools. Meditation is the first one. So I hope you're doing notes. Raquel, I do 10 minutes a day. Remember myself on a chart with a green stone sticker. <laughs> Love that. Ladies, take notes. That is beautiful. That is amazing. So here is your first trick or tool. Your body, your body is your first trick or tool. It literally is. Now look at this, Wonder Woman, Superman, right? Like look at the pose that they have. Look at how they are standing. It is no mistake that superheroes stand with their back straight, with their shoulders back, with their arms wide, with their legs wide. This is literally called a power pose. Uh, Nina, I perform meditation after a stressful day at work, which is every day. That's, you know, it, this is, this is the medication that you need, right? It literally is. Ladies, we were, born in a jungle, we still have that lizard brain that says that we need to be alert and in survival mode, but our environment has changed and our brain has not caught up. And when we were in the jungle, we did meditative exercises. We hunted, we fished, we wove baskets, we picked berries, quiet, focused, repetitive exercises that relaxed our brain. And so meditation really is doing what is natural to us, which is balancing our brain back with, with relaxation to 
basically help us deal with this world that surround us. So Kim says, Lady Chantal taught me how to meditate when I was going through such a hard time after a terrible breakup, something that I thought I couldn't do, never realized how simple it was, really is, just give it the time. I was very consistent with meditation, but then fell through the cracks again and started crying, or cycling back, sorry. Chantal asked me if I was meditating and shamefully I said no. It was the fix, it really is. I can always tell when my clients stop meditating because I get the distress calls. When I started meditating again, everything got easier in my life, fight or flight response decreased and it was far less anxious. Chantal has an amazing YouTube Let's Meditate playlist, I really do. Uh, and it has helped me improve my everyday life so much. Please try it if you haven't already. Um, if I can, you can, right? And, and Kim has had a couple concussions. So, you know, she certainly is working with a brain that sometimes works against her. And, and so, you know, when Kim says, if I can do it, you can too, she really means that. Um, so getting back into power poses, right? The way that you stand, makes you feel more confident because your body is communicating with your brain. Your brain is communicating with your body. The conversation is happening all the time, right? And remember how I talked about how your amygdala just going bloop and blitzing and going off, feeds all these chemicals in your body and puts you in an altered state, puts you in an anxious state, puts you in a fearful, heart pounding, stomach clenching, nauseated state, right? It's very physical. So, <laughs> absolutely, Kim. Kim says, I love how you can make sense of my mixed up words. So, you know, your brain affects your body in a physical way. So why couldn't your body affect your brain in a physical way? It does. Do not discount what your body can do for your mind. And so if you find yourself feeling like your confidence is low, take note of your body language. Are your shoulders slumped? Straighten them back. Is your back bent? Straighten it up. Is your chin down? Lift it up. All of these little movements start telegraphing up to your brain that you are not going to be in that state and your brain will respond and you're going to create a positive cycle. Body to brain, brain to body, body to brain, brain to body. Part of the reason why I can walk into a room and people feel like I'm confident is because I walk in with a posture of confidence. And here's how that feeds back and forth. We are reading each other all the time. We are assessing each other all the time. We are mammals. And being mammals, we pick up a lot of communication that is nonverbal, right? So eye contact or no eye contact. We understand what that means if they're looking or not looking at us. We understand tone of voice, right? We don't need words. We could go by sound. And we understand body language. We understand how a person is inside based on how their body is formed on the outside. And so when you enter a room, you are being read. So enter it with your shoulders back, with your chin up, with your back straight, no matter what you're thinking. You might be thinking, I'm so not confident right now. I so don't belong here. I don't want to be here. It doesn't matter what you're thinking. Walk into that room like Wonder Woman. Just do it because what is going to happen is people will read you, read confidence in your posture and react to that. And so you will actually get positive feedback just based on how you stand. You will get more interactions because people will be drawn to you because people are drawn to confident people. Why? Because confident people are seen as leaders. And, and again, going back to that lizard brain, going back to that caveman brain, somebody who was a leader was somebody who could bring in more resources because it knew how to get people to work together to support the tribe. And so we are naturally drawn to leaders. We are relaxed by leaders, are we not? Like, do you not sleep at night knowing, even if you disagree with the way the government is run, don't you like knowing that buses are gonna run, schools are gonna be open, your job is gonna be there? There are people running that. And so it gives you a sense of relaxation. You can sleep at night because you don't need to stress about that. So walking into room, 
confidently means people are automatically more drawn to you, which is something that works in your favor when you're looking at that sexy guy across the room. So every time you walk in a room, ladies, posture, okay? Now, here's the tips for how you're going to walk into a party with only the person who invited you, or even a gathering where you just clicked yes to an invite and you know nobody there. How are you gonna walk in that room and talk to people that you don't know? How are you gonna do that? And and this, so I wrote this as, how are you gonna start a conversation with Robert Downey Jr. at a party? Because listen, I think, besides my husband, this is just one of the sexiest men on the planet. Um, I, I love his sense of humor. Like for me, humor is so sexy. I love my husband so much because I laugh more with him than I do with any other person on this planet. And, and of course that makes me love him because laughing releases dopamine. Um, and that's a reward chemical. So, you know, there's anyways, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Uh, does it for me. You know, if I had to pick between my husband and Robert Downey Jr., I'd pick my husband. But if it was Robert Downey Jr. and any other man, I would pick Robert Downey Jr. So if I walked into a room and I did not know anybody, or even if I knew the person who brought me, and I saw Robert Downey Jr., how would I go up and talk to him? And then go up and talk to other people. Because if I only talk to Robert Downey Jr., then I'm just the wallflower again, aren't I? Like I'm, I'm just the crazy, creepy fan person. You need to talk to more than one person at a party, do you not? So that you come across and you want to come across as a confident person. So when I needed to learn how to do this, and again, I touched on this earlier, I used to be the biggest wallflower you have ever met. I had zero confidence in a room full of strangers, guys. I could not start a conversation to save my life. And I would stand there and I would desperately hope that somebody would say hello and say something to me because I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I'd want to, I would want to so bad, but my feet were filled with lead, my voice wouldn't work, and I just couldn't do it. So how did I go from that to being able to walk into any room? And I would to this day, I would now walk up to Robert Downey Jr. and I would have a conversation with him. So if, anyways, here I am in Montreal. I'm in my mid twenties. I'm living in a triplex. And the guy downstairs is in university and he says, do you want to come to a party with me? And I said, sure. And I had a click in my brain. Something said, this is an opportunity for you. And I knew I wouldn't know anybody there. So what I did is I went and got a book and it was called How to Work a Room. And it was basically for business people, but I read this book and I took the tools and I applied it. And this is what I did. Now the first tip, and you need to prepare before the party is read a newspaper, go on Google, you know, go to USA Today, go to the Toronto Star, just go to a news section and find out what the latest news is. Be up on current events so that you have talking points that are current and have an opinion. Listen, the man you want to be with wants you to have your own mind. So have an opinion. Ladies, I wanna hear from you at this point. Are you ever afraid to state your opinion? Ever? I wanna know. And if you are, under what circumstances are you afraid to state your opinion? I really, really, really wanna know this from you guys. So have talking points. Have opinions about those talking points so that you have sources of conversation. You have something to talk about. Now, when you enter this scenario, know that you have an opening with absolutely everybody in that room. And that opening, the dialogue opener, the conversation starter, is the one thing that you all have in common, which is the host the reason for being there, right? If it's a house party, it's the host. If it's a networking event, it is the networking event, right? So say you're at a house party, your opening line, your first question is, how do you know the host? 
It's so simple, but it gets somebody talking and it gives you a little bit of insight about them. And that insight leads you into the next tip, which is ask questions. Because the more questions you ask, the less you have to think about what to say, which takes the pressure off of you. And frankly, if somebody came up to you and asked you a question, wouldn't you just be grateful? You might be you might be helping somebody who's another social, you know, not social butterfly, who's who's the person who's standing there desperately wishing somebody would open up a conversation with them. So Kim says, I used to be afraid to state my opinion after reading all of your books. I love you, Kim. I have learned to be self-confident and believe in myself now like I never had before, not afraid of disagreeing with others like I was. Raquel, sometimes I feel that I state my opinion too much. Hmm. I wouldn't know, but you know, I think Raquel, as long as you're balancing, as long as you're also, you know, because there's, there's a way of debating, right? And it's called the so uh, Socrates method. Sometimes my French brain just wants me to say words in a different way. So by the way, I found out I was saying phenyl ethylamine and I'm still saying it wrong because I don't even remember how to say it right. But I had a chemist come on my YouTube channel and say, by the way, chemist here, and you're saying the word wrong. <laughs> Crap. Um, so Raquel, as long as, as you take the time to understand someone else's opinion and then say it back to them, then you've created a balance. So I don't think there's such thing as too much, um, as long as you're also listening at the same time. So asking questions means that you're engaging somebody and, and think about it. When somebody asks you questions, you're like, oh, I, you know, I don't have to think about what to talk about. I can just answer these questions. And, and I don't know about you, but I love talking because I discover a lot when I talk and you might help the other person learn more about themselves at the same time. And people love to talk about themselves. It makes them feel acknowledged. It makes them feel heard. It makes them feel good. And so good. I'm kind of agreeing to ask more questions. Awesome. Um, and, and when people feel good because of you, guess what? They are associating this good feeling to you, which means they like you. So now you're creating warmth. Now you're creating good vibes. And, and when you put good vibes in someone, they come back at you and they elevate your vibes. And now your elevated vibes are vibing back at them elevating their vibes, which are vibing back at you. And can you see what that cycle is? It's an, it's a cycle of elevation that is really, really nice. Now you're going to go to a party. You're going to put this into practice because I know you are, because you are my smart, smart ladies and you're going to hit a comfort zone. And I want you to not get too comfortable. I want you to have that conversation for about 20 minutes and then extract yourself and say, I love this conversation. This is really fun, but I have to go. Uh, I'm going to go grab another drink, right? Find an excuse, find a reason. I got to go see my friend. I'm going to go find, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm going to go outside, take a breath of fresh air, find a reason to get yourself away from this conversation because I want you to practice and I want you to go find someone else who's standing alone and I want you to do it again for another 20 minutes. Uh, Holly says, I don't have any problem asking questions. I blank out when they ask me something. Um, take your time answering, you know, and be honest, Holly. When somebody asks you a question and you blank out, take your time and train yourself to be okay with blanking out and then be okay with searching for the answer and then giving that answer and just say, Oh, wait a second. I just, I blanked out for a moment. Just let me think about that. Okay. Here's the answer, right? Give yourself permission to do that. And, and with time and maybe practice with some friends, right? Maybe say, you know what? Like I tend to blank out guys. Can you like do something with me? Like, like let's do this thing. Let's call the pot party. Some of you might have heard this before from me. You get a group of people together. You put some pen and paper on the table and, and all the papers are the same size, you know, 
and people write questions on the paper and they fold it twice so they all look the same you put it in a bowl and as as soon as there's three you can start and somebody picks a question out of the bowl and then they answer it and then the person next to them answers it and then the person next to them answers the question it goes round and round and round the room until everybody's answered the question and then the next person picks out of the bowl and everybody answers the question so holly if you can maybe organize a party like this this is a good opportunity for you to practice answering questions uh, Holly and I make a lot of funny faces. Holly, let me tell you, the man who falls in love with you is going to love that about you. It's going to be, it's going to be the quirk that he's going to adore. Okay. Um, Nina says, my personality can be strong and aggressive, makes people nervous about, it, especially men don't understand why. Um, you know, Nina, as long as you are, uh, Nina says, okay, let me backtrack. Um, I'm very social, but things can get weird when I can't think of anything else. Your ideas for a conversation will definitely help me out. Good, 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 Nina. And then strong and aggressive, people get nervous about. So Nina, um, make sure that you're, maybe they get nervous because they feel they're being bulldozed and they're not, they're not being a part of the conversation. They're being talked to instead of being talked with. And so if you can make sure that you're balancing what you're saying, with listening to what they need to say as well, I think you're going to find that that is going to sort of crack that ice a little bit. Um, I know. I I think what you mean, Nina, is passionate. Nina says not aggressive in a bad way. Um, and then Sherry says, "What if I don't have an exciting social life?" LOL. Sherry, you're going to start creating one, my love. And I mean, you're a very fit person, uh, which means you probably go to the gym, which means you do have a social life. You are in social situations. Um, so you can use that, right? Use your environment. Um, and, and talk to more people, start more conversations, practice this. Raquel, people always remember how you made them feel, not always what you said. That's very true, Raquel. Um, uh, Latoya, hey girl, late to the party. Latoya's in, uh, in Alberta, um, which is cool. We got like local ladies. We got ladies from Texas, ladies from Alberta. So this is how, you know, so these tips here is how you can approach absolutely anybody at a party, including Robert Downey Jr. But what if you are in a coffee shop and you see someone from across a room, right? So these tips are for socializing. These are going to open social doors. And the more social doors you open, by the way, the more people you talk to, the more people you get to know, the more people who know who you are, the more opportunities you create for dates. Because in the course of a conversation, you can talk about your status. Oh, I'm single and I'm looking, right? So say you go to a party and you go up to somebody, you go, hey, how do you know the host? They tell you how they know how they know them. And then and then you say, So what do you do for a living? Oh, well, I do this. Okay, well, I I you know, when they say what they're doing, by the way, ask them, what do you love about your job? Or do you love your job? You know, get them to talk, get them to open up about themselves, starting on something that is just so easy to talk about, which is what we do for a living. It's a question we all ask each other. It is an expected question. It's an easy question. What do you do? And then they'll say what they do. And then you can say, do you love your job? And if they say no, then you can say, what would you rather do? What would be your dream job? What would be the, what would you do if you, if you could live and wouldn't have to worry about not being paid? and see what they say and then delve into that you know uh what do you like to do for fun if you know um what do you love to learn these are all great questions peel the layers back get to know them and as you get to know them you can input your own information there too and they will get to know you and eventually you'll get around to saying you know oh like oh i noticed you're married you know i'm hoping to meet my soulmate one day and then you know, maybe this person knows somebody that would be a fit for you. So the more people you meet, the more people you talk to, the more people you open up to, the more people can start working for you to help you find that relationship. So now you're stepping in the coffee shop <clears throat> and you need to flirt. You need to let somebody know the door is open. How are you going to flirt with Robert Downey Jr.? Right? How are you going to flirt 
with Mr. Robert Downey Jr. from across that room. How are you going to flirt with the guy who is making your heart pound in your chest? How will you cross that room and start that conversation and let him know this is not a friend zone conversation. This is a the door is open open conversation and I'm inviting you to step through. I'm giving you an opportunity to pursue me as a romantic interest if you so desire. How do you communicate that? Remember the guy on the airstrip, on the, on the, the boat, waving it in? How do you wave it in, ladies? You need to wave it in because I promise you, and I have seen several of you women, I promise you, there are men, not guys, men, good, generous, your soulmate kind of men who are looking at you and telling themselves, there's no way she's not in a relationship. I'm not even going to bother. How do you make sure you don't miss those opportunities? That's what this lesson is about tonight, is making sure those opportunities become opportunities and don't get lost in your fear. So, first of all, you gotta cross that room. I cannot move your feet for you. You will need to put one lead foot in front of the other. And ladies, do you know how Mount Everest is climbed? It is one exhausted, heavy foot in front of the other. I have read books by people who have climbed Mount Everest and told the tale. And it is an exhausting journey. And by the time you were on the last leg, all you were thinking about, your sole focus is putting one foot in front of the other. And if that's what you need to do in this moment, put your entire focus in putting one foot in front of the other, then God damn it, you do that you put that foot in front of the other and you cross that room and you go up to him. Uh, so Latoya, do you think if you walk by making eye contact, he sees you and he looks away, he's not interested? No, Latoya, I actually think he might just be shy. He might be unsure if you're in a relationship. Good men are respectful. And if he's already told himself, if he's convinced himself that you are too fine to not be in a relationship, he will automatically respect that and not pursue you. And so he might look away because he just doesn't know what to do in that moment. Or he he's, he's very attracted to you and it makes him nervous. Or he just wants to respect what he thinks is a taken woman. That's all. Uh, Nina, how do we avoid men who are making eye contact with us, flirting, only to find out he has a girlfriend and she's actually close by. Uh, this is what you do. You go, whoop, bye. And then you zoom, off you go. That's it. Just go. Just take yourself out of the situation. So you're going to cross that room. Nina, this is a problem I have. I've had men flirt with me, talk to me, only to find out later in the night he's not single and his girlfriend shows up. Uh, Nina, let me correct you on this. That was not a man. That was a guy. And guys are selfish short-term thinkers and guys are looking after their penises. And, and you know how I talked about how, um, fear will keep you with the wrong person. I mean, feel sorry for that girl because she's afraid to leave the guy who's going out and flirting with other women to see who else he can pick up. Like, that's just sad. Um, but the moment you see that is, I mean, what, what can you do, right? Like you don't know. And this is why I say open more doors because usually the ones who are coming after you, the bold ones, the ones that are sparkly on the outside, the ones who were not afraid, the pickup artists, right? These can often be selfish short-term thinkers, but the generous long-term thinkers are more thoughtful. And they look for the bigger signals. Like the selfish short-term thinkers will go after who they're attracted to regardless of signals. Generous long-term thinkers tend to look for the obvious, oh, she is not taken. She is available. I can proceed signal. You need to be obvious. You need to let him know that door is open. 
Uh, Nina, good point. Boys, not men. Exactly. Exactly. There is a difference. They are an altogether different breed. And I, I'm steering you towards the men. And that's why this technique is important because it lets the men in. And you need to let them in. You need to widen your opportunities to let the men in, not just choose from the ones that are choosing you. Because this is, this is a small, sometimes dysfunctional pool. And I want you to get outside of that. And I want you to go meet those men because they come to me at book signings and they go, why can't I find somebody? And I say, I'm working on it. I am liberating them from the selfish short-term thinkers and I'm teaching them how to let you know the door is open, okay? First, you need to touch him. So you've crossed that room. Good for you, girlfriend. You were brave enough to cross that room, okay? But he needs to know this is not just a casual thing. He needs to actually know that you are interested in him in a romantic way. And nothing tells him that more than touch. If you break the bubble, that societal bubble, the distance bubble, you know, you know, the one that says, don't stand in my space. If you break the bubble, you get his attention. So I want you to get his attention. I want you to break the bubble. I want you to let him know with that touch, I'm not here just to ask a question. I'm here to communicate interest. That's what your touch will do. So touch his hand, touch his arm, touch his back, touch him. So don't touch his butt. <laughs> Who was going to touch his butt? I want to know, ladies. Tell me, were you going to touch his butt? Don't touch his butt but touch him, break the bubble, because his brain is gonna snap to attention, okay? And you want that to happen. You want his full attention, so touch. Touch is so important. State the obvious. So I don't, did anybody have a good giggle when they when they saw my, my opening statement to Robert Downey Jr.? I wanna know, guys, did anybody laugh at that because I thought it was funny. So state the obvious. What was there something about him? Can you think of something funny? Because if you can make him laugh in that moment, Latoya, good tips. Thank you, my love. If you can make him laugh, then you're breaking another bubble and you're really piercing into, Leah, Sherry, thank you. <laughs> you want, you really want to pierce into his brain because you really want to get his full attention. And if you can make him laugh, you are, Releasing dopamine in his brain. Heart <laughs> is shiny. Sylvia, hello, lovely. We got another one in. Hi, Sylvia. Listen, Sylvia, what you can miss, you can catch up on the replay, okay? Um, and so you, if you can make him laugh, this is gold, gold, my loves, because you release dopamine in his brain. So you know those, those little muscles that you have up beside your eyes that we're trying to kill? That we're, that we're using all this Botox on because we want, we don't want to see those lines. Those muscles that make those lines crinkle are the ones that communicate to your brain that something good just happened. And your brain releases dopamine and dopamine is the same chemical your brain releases when you snort cocaine. Why do people snort cocaine again and again and do it again and get addicted to it? Because dopamine is the reward chemical. And so you just made him feel rewarded. You made him feel good can't touch him because he's in the Netherlands. <laughs> well, Sylvia, are you dating somebody who's in a different country? It's hard to date someone who can't take you out to dinner. So if you're looking to date somebody local, this is how you're going to break that bubble. This is how you're going to break through and let him know. Touch him, break the bubble, release the dopamine in his brain. Now he's like, who is this woman? Because she she let me know she's interested with that physical touch. And then she just made me feel good, right? So now you've got some goodness going on, which you want to do because again, like, like I think it was Raquel who pointed that out, people will forget everything you've ever said. They will not forget how you made them feel. You will have a short conversation. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about that. But what you want to leave him with is a feeling. And so that touch, oh, what's this? Laughter, wow, she's interesting. And then an exchange that makes him feel like you're engaged with him, that you're interested in him, right? So say, if you can open with a funny opening line, 
Do it. Do it. Um, your socks really crack me up. I want to get my grandpa a pair. Where'd you get those? Right? Something snappy. Something that gets his attention. You know, my example for like a really tall guy is, wow, you look, you look like a moose at a bunny convention. Um, just if it make him feel good, make him smile, uh, say, say he smell good, you know, oh, you smell good. And I, you know, what is that? <laughs> I just, I just froze up myself. You know, think of it before you cross the room. That's my point. Don't put yourself on the spot. Look at him from across the room. Come up with that snappy line, cross the room, lean over, touch him. Say what you want to say to open that up, to make the smile come to his face. If you can make him laugh, it is the best thing you can do. And then have that easy conversation that you would have at a party. Are you from around here? Do you eat here often? What's your favorite place to eat around here? What do you do for a living, right? Like a little bit of exchange, get some information, peel the layers back a little bit, you know, the things that you ask are also things you can respond to and give your own information. Uh, Latoya says, can't I just say I thought he was cute, so I thought I'd come over. But say something more interesting, right? Say something unexpected because all the things that I teach you guys, it's all about making you a woman unlike any other, right? I want you to stand out in his mind because you're going to use the no kissing for three months rule, right? And I want him to feel like it's worth it. And when you can do something and say something that makes you different, that makes you unusual, now you have curiosity going. And curiosity is the sign of an intelligent man. And you want to be with an intelligent man, don't you? So spark his curiosity. So come up with something funny, something witty, something to laugh at. Ask him some questions <clears throat> and then get the fuck out because you are not just walking into coffee shops looking for men to flirt with. That's not your thing. And you're not looking in, you're not, you're not walking into coffee shops looking to have a date. You weren't walking in that coffee shop looking to just hang out and do nothing. You were in between places. Even if you're not, even if you have the entire day to kill, it doesn't matter. Get out of the situation so that you give him time to think. Sherry says, I feel like that that's a lot. Getting up the courage to say hello, attractive man, and be funny. Just keep working at it, Sherry. It feels like a lot because it's outside of your box, because you haven't been socialized to do that yet. So it's not natural. And so Yes, it seems like a lot just because you haven't done it yet and it'll be hard the first time, but it'll be easier the next time and easier the next time after. Look, I went to a party where I didn't know anybody and I told myself I'm going to strike up a conversation with an opening line. And by the way, if you come up with a good opening line, use it over and over again. There's no shame in that whatsoever. If it works, don't fix it. <clears throat> I walked into a party. I didn't know anybody. I used an opening line. I asked questions and I did it despite my fears. I did it despite being so scared to do that. And it was hard. Let me tell you, before that door opened and I stood on the other side with the friend who brought me, I looked at that door and I said, this is it. And everything inside of me was absolutely terrified but I didn't say it. I didn't empower it. And I blasted my way through it. And it took me a while to start that first conversation because I needed to work up enough courage to do it because I was so fearful and I needed to work up more courage than my fear. And it took some time, but I did it. And that is the key is doing it. You have to do it. It is a lot, I agree, but it's just behaviors. It's just actions. And once you do it, it's no longer unfamiliar. And once you do it a second and a third time, it becomes no longer scary. So at least get beyond the unfamiliar 
and then keep repeating it so that it stops being scary. And you won't say to me or anybody, it seems like a lot. You're going to start telling people you should do this because it feels great. Now, you're going to have a short conversation. It's going to last a few minutes, no more, because I want you to let him think, right? You're there for your coffee. You need to chit chat with him a little bit. And then it's like, oops, I got to go. I have a meeting to get to. I have a friend waiting for me. I have something to do, right? Whatever it is, I have to go. I have to go do this thing. But I really love to see you again. Here's my email address. <clears throat> and I, I tell my coaching clients to, you know, start a new Gmail account so that they have one just in case this guy turns out to be crazy, right? You know, you know, maybe, maybe you want to start a new one so that you're not polluting your, you know, the one that you're using now with, with people that you wish you hadn't given your email to, which may or may not happen. But uh, I like people to be prepared for whatever happens in life, right? So maybe start a new Gmail account just specifically for these interactions and give him that email account. In case, you know, because I need you to give him something to get a hold of you. So give him an email and let him know. I, you know, warmly, sincerely let him feel how much. Touch him when you say this. I would love to continue this conversation, but I really have to go. Here's my email address. Why don't you get a hold of me and we'll grab a coffee and give him your email address. And he might say, oh, well, you take mine, you get a hold of me. And you say, no, 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 you contact me because here's the thing. Good men are good hunters. They're good cavemen. And you want to know, right? This is... I'm teaching you how to vet here, ladies. If you have to chase him, this is a selfish short-term thinker. This is somebody who's lazy. This is somebody who just wants to collect what is going to come easily and take advantage of that. If he comes after you, potentially, and of course, if you're following my advice, you know I give you a lot of vetting processes, and this is just one of them. If he comes after you, if he reaches out to you and he makes plans with you, this is your first clue that you may have a man who is a generous long-term thinker who's into you, which is great. So let him come after you. And if he goes, well, here's my email address too. Don't fight it too long and hard. Take his email address, give him yours, but don't reach out to him, no matter how hot he was, no matter how well-dressed he was, no matter how good on paper he seemed because he told you he did this and he had that and he was on his way to these trips and he just came back from that trip. No matter what he says, do not reach out to him because I want your first clue to be his behavior when you leave. Does he reach out? Does he make plans with you? This will be your clue into whether or not he's so interested in you that he doesn't want to let you get away. So give him that opportunity. Sylvia says, yes, long distance relationship, but it's weird. I'm trying to let him go, but he comes back. But at the beginning, I was doing things like you were saying, but three months later, he started ghosting. Sylvia, <clears throat> ask yourself this. What do you want? What do you want in a relationship? Do you want somebody who can cuddle you at night, who can kiss you at night? Do you want somebody who can make plans with you and show up? If that's what you want, you may want to let this go so that you can have what you want. So now Sherry said, this seems like a lot. And, you know, I agree. It does, especially when you've never done it before. And I know because I've been through the process. I have been through it from terrified to owning my space when I walk in a room and able to walk up to Robert Downey Jr. and say, you remind me of my old dildo. Hard and shiny. Da -da -da, right? So how do you do this again? Over and over and over because, ladies, you need to get the law of averages working for you, which means 
you have to release the outcome because listen, we all agree the first time is going to be poop my pants scary, which means you may stumble on your words, even worse yet, you might stumble on the way over there, right? You might trip over your own feet. You might look like a complete fool. Uh, Holly says, I can do that, but I feel so exhausted afterwards. Uh, Holly, you're talking about um, communicating with people. Sylvia, Sylvia, blocked him already, ready to start again. High five, taking your power, not waiting for somebody to end it for you. You being the one who is, who is stating loud and clear to the universe, I am making space for the right one by clearing my space of the wrong ones. Good for you, girlfriend, proud of you. Um, yes, you know, but Holly, yes, it can feel exhausting and, and I'm, you know, it does take a lot of energy to be social. I totally understand that because my work is socializing. I go to events, I give talks and, and I'll spend hours on a stage, hours giving a seminar. And then afterwards people come up and want to talk to me. And so I do understand that being social can take a lot of energy, but it's in the moment that counts. And, and so be in the moment and meditate so that you do have more fortification inside of you. You do have more energy. You do have more peace. You do have less fear. Uh, yeah, Sylvia's getting high fives from other ladies. Good, good, good. Thank you, Raquel, for that. Um, so, Listen, anticipate the first time you do this, that it will be a disaster. You know, laugh at yourself ahead of time. Laugh at yourself right now. Imagine that it's, it's going to be like, you're going to stutter. Uh, you're going to freeze up. You're going to blank. You're going to, you're going to look at him and do that. And he's going to look at you like you are the weirdest person on the world. So what? That's okay. That's okay. I mean, think about the first time you played a sport, right? Did you not suck? Totally. But did you keep the sport up? Was it something you fell in love with? Um, you know, uh, Sheree, you're a very fit person, but I'm sure the first time you lifted a weight or the first time you went running, the first time you did one of those activities that makes you look the way you look today, that you were not at the level that you are now, right? There's suckage in the beginning when you're doing something new. It is normal. Um, Nina, yes, Sylvia, you deserve more and better. I love, love the support you ladies are giving. So here's the thing. Release the outcome ahead of time. Tell yourself, I'm going to do it, and it doesn't matter what happens. I'm going to do it and it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if he says he doesn't want my email. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter if he looks at me like I'm a fish flopping out of water and he's going, I don't know what to do with this. It doesn't matter if you give him your email and he never reaches out. All of that does not matter. Release the outcome. Make the effort and release the outcome. Do you know how my husband and I got to four years without a single fight? Was me simply making the effort to get us to this place and not holding him to any standard whatsoever, not holding myself to any standard except I'm going to behave better, I'm going to put in an effort, and I'm going to do what is right. That's it. That's it. So just do it, do your best, do it again, do your best the next time, do it again, do your best the next time. You're going to see an improvement with every time you do it, just like everything new that you take on. This is no different. Um, and then release the outcome, right? Just, just let it go and just, just know you're going to keep doing it until that magical word, until, until you have the success. Sherry says, the difference is the gym is my place of work. Chances I'll bump into that person again. Um, but again, right? Like you can, you can get to know people. You can keep it casual. You can keep it light, right? If you're, if this is a social place, Sherry, then use those social tools that I gave, how to, how to talk to Robert Downey Jr. at a party, use that and increase your social circle and get those people working for you. 
Um, right. You know, and that's why I give you like the two different scenarios. That's why there's two different scenarios. What would you do in a social situation to increase your chances? What would you do in, in a, ooh, I, I, I want to approach that guy at, at this place. And if it flops, it's okay because I'm probably never going to see them again. Sort of situation. Use them both to your advantage. So yes, it'll suck. Yes, you'll suck. Yes, you're going to feel uncomfortable. But yes, you'll be fine. You will be fine. You're going to be okay because it, those are just feelings. And, and, you know, feelings are intangible. It's a fog. It's a mist. It's not real and they can be overcome. Um, and, and guys, listen, the worst feeling is the feeling of regret and you will not regret approaching somebody. You will not regret practicing this until you get good at it. I promise you this. I promise you this. You never regret getting good at something. So, and understanding the law of averages means you have to do it over and over again. So get that first time done, right? Anticipate the first time is going to suck. Release the expectation that the first time is going to bring you anything. Just have fun with it. Have fun. Have fun. Get it under your belt, get it done so that you can do it again and then again and then again and get used to doing it, get comfortable doing it. This will open so many doors, so many doors. So ladies, tell me something. Did you learn anything tonight? Did anybody take notes? Did you guys, did you guys, you know, what was the standout? What was the thing that really stood out the most for you? that you learned tonight, what is it that you are telling yourself, this is great, this is a tool that I can use, I'm going to use this, I'm excited to use this, I'm nervous to use this, I'm afraid to use this, but I'm going to use this. What is that? Let me know in the chat, write something in there, give me some feedback on that, tell me what you loved, tell me what you appreciated, tell me what you learned, Tell me what is going to change for you going forward. Love to hear that. Sylvia says, thank you, girls. Difficult, but I will be fine. The good one is coming. Perfect attitude, Sylvia. Um, Sherry says, not take myself so seriously. Nina says, to not be afraid to make the first move. We have to in order to gain more confidence on approaching men, yes. And men need you to make that first move because they need to know that you're available because they are looking at you and they are shutting themselves down because they want to be respectful. So you need to let them know that door is open. So you're doing it for yourself, but you're also doing it for them. You are literally doing them a favor. Uh, Latoya says scared to death. Don't be afraid, Latoya. I mean, I mean, okay, no. I mean, you are afraid. I get that. But just do it anyway. Do it anyway. Then send me an email and go, oh my God, I did this and this is what happened. I'd love to hear that, you guys. Give me your, you know, if you put this into practice, let me know how it worked out for you. Nina, just relax and be myself. Yes, lovely. Holly, I like the idea of making someone laugh. It makes you more memorable. 100% spot on, girlfriend. Uh, Nina says, if they can't see our interest, bye, Felicia. That's right, darling. You know, not everybody out there is right for you. We all have exes, right? But there is somebody who is, and you need to make your way towards them. Um, Kim says, to walk in, head held high. That's right, darling. Great posture, confident, make the move, kick fear to the curb. Welcome a conversation that could lead to an amazing future with the right man. Kim, so well said, so beautiful, so amazing. Oh my God, you guys. Okay, 920. So, uh, by the way, my books are on sale on Amazon. So I wrote all these books. Um, Comeback Queen helps you get over a breakup. Dating 101, this one is for your, your teenagers because we should have gotten a better education. So I'm going to give it to them. Fake love need not apply. If you know anybody who, you know, picks up the wrong type over and over and over again, the predators, the losers, the ones that are going nowhere, the scammers, you need to get them this book or you need to tell them, look, if 
you use an e-reader, go to my website. Ladies, if you use an e-reader, go to my website, sign up for my mailing list. You're going to get a free digital download of Fake Love Need Not Apply. Uh, my website is canadasdatingcoach.com. Um, no more assholes. Obviously, this is your vetting process. After the first kiss happens literally after the first kiss. How are you going to set that foundation? Ladies, I have rules. I have rules that help you get into the right relationship. So no more assholes is no kissing for three months. After the first kiss is no melding for one full year. So don't get a joint credit card. Don't get an apartment. You can sleep over at each other's place 365 days but don't give up your place. Don't let him give up his, right? Maintain some independence for a full year because you still need to assess who this person is. And I also give you tips on how to handle his life is, you know, if he's a good man, he's a good father, which means there's a baby mama in the picture. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with insecurity? The more we love somebody, the more we fall for them, the higher the insecurity level goes after that first kiss, after we commit, because we have a fear of loss, which is what jealousy and insecurity is. And as long as you're not controlling or they're not controlling, it's okay to go through that phase, but you need to go through it without being controlling. You need to deal with your emotions. You need to be an understanding person. So I, I help you understand his nuances and I help you communicate your nuances so that you're not vomiting on each other. And oh, Sherry says, fake love. That's my next one. Uh, Raquel, you're wonderful. So are you. Uh, now fix that shit, right? Once we go through the insecurity phase, now we get into the reality phase. And this is where our the way that we were brought up, which sometimes isn't functional, our past relationships, which if we're seeking the familiar, even if it's wrong for us, I know I certainly did. I left home. And I, I picked up abusive boyfriends and then I became abusive. So I continued a cycle of abuse. That baggage can be vomited into your relationships over. And you're just picking up more because every relationship creates more baggage. And so when you meet that soulmate and you're vomiting your past on each other, how do you unpack the baggage so that you stop? Again, my husband and I fought for 10 years. We to fix that shit is how I got there. I don't just help you get in the right relationship. I get you to the finish line. I get you to feeling like this is magical. Uh, Nina says after the first kiss will probably be in the next one. Perfect. Perfect. It's, I love the sales on that book because no more assholes is my number one bestseller. And then after the first kiss comes in and, and I'll see like a rush of no more of sales of no more assholes. And then I see a rush of after the first kiss and I'm like, I got some graduates, which is amazing because you ladies are learning how to vet, which is beautiful. I said, Amazon has some of my books on sale. Ladies, I, when I do a public appearance, I sell my books one for 20, two for 30. I don't even sell my books for as cheap as Amazon has them right now. So if, if there's any one of those books that you're interested in, or you know a friend who is, then send them to Amazon, go to Amazon, go pick up a copy because you're going to get it for super cheap. Um, and then of course, if you don't know where to find me, uh, you know, I do my weekly webinars. I also, if you, if you've done this already, that's great. If you have a friend who needs to come onto this, the No More Assholes webinar, I get on with this incredible life coach in Grab, Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, Rebecca Thomas, and she's in a fantastic relationship. I'm in a fantastic relationship. Ladies, we want to show you how we want to model this for you. We want to show you how good men behave and what they do for us so that you know what you're working towards. Because if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. And that is the whole purpose of this No More Assholes webinar is showing you what it is. And I give you a lot of tips on here on how to vet and make sure that you're getting that relationship, that you're weeding out the selfish short-term thinkers. Um, one area, Nina, problem for me, my past will begin to creep up. It, it does for all of us, lovely. My past will begin to creep up due to really bad trust issues from past men. I mean, really bad. Nina, I put my fist through a window. That's how bad my baggage was. Um, so, you know, you, you can come from where you are and this can be healed, but you need to follow the steps that I lay out because there is science mixed in with spirituality. I get you fully understanding how you function. 
Um, you know, and I do all this free stuff because I want you guys to learn it. I want you to know how to do it. I've got the podcast. I got my YouTube channel. I do, I do these webinars. Um, I have a blog. There's like 80 questions that I answer on this blog. Um, you know, what else, what else do I have for you? Like I'm posting constantly on Instagram and Facebook with like, you know, my thoughts as they're running. Like it's just, it's just I've got verbal diarrhea literally happening on my social media. So make sure that you're following me, read my stuff, be inspired by me, please. I just, I want you to follow these footsteps because I want you to be where I am. And if you need help, let me put this up here for you. Uh, if you need to, work one-on-one -on -one with me, then get some coaching because you will be surprised at how quickly it takes hold when you are working with me. Because first of all, I don't let you lie to yourself. I hold you accountable to the better behaviors. So I actually check in with you every day and I have you doing some exercises. The first thing that I deal with is I help you modify your brain. Remember how I talked about the amygdala and how reducing your fight or flight is actually going to help you deal with those feelings of fear. I'm, I'm not, my first step in all of this was meditation. It wasn't crossing the room because I want you to work with your body and I get you understanding how your body functions. I get you understanding how you can modify parts of your body, like your brain, so that it helps you on this journey. And so the first thing I have you do is actually change your brain structure because it changes how you feel. And by changing how you feel, I can help you make things easier. So all those other things like crossing that room, overcoming your fear, all become easier. So doing the coaching with me, letting me walk you through step by step by step means that you'll propel yourself a lot faster because by working with me, you work with me every single day and you start feeling better day by day by day. I love, love, love what I do. If, if you click the link on there. Oh, sorry. I didn't even, I made that mistake before. Okay. There you go. So you guys are going to see the offer now. If you click to start, if you click on the C options, you're going to see me brag because I am super proud of myself. I am very proud of the effect that I have. There is not one single person that has worked with me, that follows my advice, that doesn't see a big shift quickly. And I love this, I love this. And, and you know, I say on there, it fires me up. And I believe in karma because I feel it because there are so many of you that I'm changing at this point. And I have no alarm in the morning, but I am up and at them, usually before 8 a.m. There's, I work from home. I am accountable to nobody. There is no boss that I need to punch a clock with. But I am up before 8 a.m. ready to go and I'm working. Like the first thing I do is I pick up my device, even before I have a glass of water even before I pee, because I'm so excited to get started on this because I'm feeling the shift that is happening and the change that you have, the experiences that you have, the couples photos that I get, they excite me so much and, and, and the growth, like all the time, this is growing. I see my website stat, my website stats going up. I see my YouTube views going up. And it is so incredible because you're telling your friends and, and it's so cute because I posted this on Instagram the other day and it was a lady who said, the lady that I lent no more assholes to, so she got no more assholes from a friend, by the way. And that friend said, you need to read this. This lady reached out to me. She's been working with me. She sent me a message. She said, I lent no more assholes to a friend who came back and now she's borrowing fix that shit from me. My books are crack. They are crack. It's like you're, you, you can't wait to tell people about them, which is super exciting. And I love, love, love it. So if you find that reading my books isn't enough, watching my videos, taking part in the podcast, if you need more motivation, do get some coaching because I really can help you cross that finish line as long as you let me. And that is the key. If you let me help you, I can definitely help you. So I'm going to sign off for tonight. I love, love that. Oh, by the way, sorry. Don't go away yet. I'm going back in the chat. 
Uh, Sylvia says, thank you. I'm going to read the book. Good vibes. Regards from Mexico. Love it. Love it. Hola, senorita. Um, Kim says, Raquel, good for you. I've reread No More Assholes so many times. And the Comeback Queen, we can always use a refresher. Pick up. So, ladies, um, <clears throat> Raquel says, I need to reread No More Assholes. Uh, how else can I show affection? Raquel, so Raquel is asking, how can, how else can I show affection if I'm not kissing for three months? You will find ways. If you stay away from the lips, your imagination starts to work for you, right? So with my husband, we didn't kiss for the longest time. And, and so what I was doing is I was, I was like, because like you feel this growing affection for somebody who's respecting you, who's caring for you, who's making plans for you, who was showing devotion for you, who is showing you that he's listening to what you say, listening to the things that you say make you happy, and then applying that information, right? What, what could possibly make you feel more affectionate, more warm and fuzzy, more desiring of this person than qualities like that, you know, especially if they're hardworking and you observe them in their life otherwise, and they're so good to the people around them, and you're realizing what a decent, amazing human being is in front of you, how do you not just eat them up? Here's what you do. You kiss anything but, right? And that, but I don't mean the penis, guys. Listen, no kissing means no sex, no foreplay. Be affectionate. Hold him tight. Squeeze him. Uh, I used to kiss that little spot right along here, that little hollow. Oh, that soft, soft little hollow right here along the corner of my husband's eyes. I kiss his cheeks, kiss his cheekbones. Like my husband to this day, he loves it because I'll pepper his face with kisses and he just sits there with his eyes closed and goes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. He just, he adores it. So no kissing for three months helps you use your imagination to show more ways to be affectionate and appreciative of each other. It's beautiful training for intimacy. And if over the course of three months without kissing, you cannot create intimacy, then you shouldn't kiss that person, right? If the feelings don't elevate over and over and over again, over the course of three months, this is not the right one for you and it's a good thing you didn't kiss them. Ladies, I, uh, loving it. Nina says, reading no more assholes and I'm loving it, makes so much sense. The kissing rule is legit. It so is, ladies. I've walked so many women through it and when you, I've walked men through it too, by the way. Men come to me for coaching. They love what I say. You know why? Because it helps them get access to the good women who are out there and weed out the bad ones because listen, men are struggling too. Men are dealing with some of the same bullshit scenarios you are. Um, <clears throat> so I need to know what is our next topic next week? I'm glad you're all still here. I love you guys. You're so freaking amazing. What is our next topic next week? What shall we talk about? Um, we can talk about first dates. We can talk about how to have first dates, what you should do on first dates. Do you guys want to talk about that? Do you have any other ideas that maybe you'd like to see the other ladies vote on? What do you think? What would you like to do? What should we talk about next week? What's our next topic? Um, Yes, Raquel, thank you so much for explaining. I have so much more faith in the rule now. Yes. Uh, oh, Sherry, how to write a good online dating profile. Okay, that's one, yeah. Okay, ladies, you read my mind, first date. So we have one vote for first date. We have another one for how to, how to write an online dating profile. Raquel, the five love languages. Nina, love to talk about moving on from the past and not letting it interfere with future potential men. Okay, we got all kinds of topics here, ladies. Let's get some consensus going here. What would you all like to talk about? So these are great topics, by the way. I'm going to write these down because even if we don't do it next week, then we can dive into it going forward. So five love languages. Ladies. Uh, so Sherry says the five. So we got two for the five love languages. Um, we have the online dating profile. And we had, we had two for that, right? Um, and then we had first dates. So, okay. 
All right. So ladies, I see, um, yeah, all of the above sounds great. Uh, Sherry popped on saying she loves the five love languages. So Sylvia, online dating. Okay. Why don't we do, maybe we can do both next week, guys. Why don't we talk about uh, the five love languages and how to write an online dating profile? What do you guys think of that? Do you want to do both next week? Because we can. We can. Because I can, I can keep the five love language one uh, rather brief and just give you a little bit, like I can give you some training on that. Because um, that one I'm sure I can keep short. And then I can get more in depth on how to write your, uh, your online dating profile. So Raquel says that sounds perfect. Kim says all of the above sounds great. Sherry says yes, please, right? Compromise. Look at this. Nina says sure. Okay, ladies. Okay. It looks like we got lots of agreement on that. So next week, I'm going to teach you how to create a bomb diggity online dating profile. I'm going to teach you how to create one that is not going to be a guy magnet, but definitely going to be a man magnet. And I want you guys to feel confident going online with this. I want you to splash it all over the place. I want you to go fish in a lot of ponds with this dating profile. Because here's the thing. Sometimes people say, well, which, which, where should I go? Oh, Sherry says you might need Tuesday night day. <laughs> love, love you, Sherry. Um, love this, love this. I want to see more people say that. Uh, okay. So. Your online dating profile. Some of you guys, we did a poll a few weeks ago and I was like, how many of you have just given up on online dating? And I know why, trust me, I get paid to go online. And I had a woman one time, um, one of my followers on Facebook, and she sent me like some just horrible stuff that she was getting from, we sent to her from her profile. And I, I said, I said, listen, I get paid to look at this stuff and you owe me $5 now, okay? <laughs> like, I know it sucks. But the kind of profile that you're going to create is going to get you less attention from those ones. And I'm also going to teach you how to deal with those ones, which if you've listened to my delete, 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 you already know where I'm going with this. Um, Nina, oh my God, I give up on online dating. Um, Holly, thank you. I'll try online dating. Yes, but wait. So Nina and Holly, just come and do this webinar next week to find out how to make the right profile and then create that profile and follow my advice and it will not be so horrible, okay? Uh, Nina, maybe it's due to be my fault as well for mistakes. And, and you know, when we don't know what we're doing wrong, we just kept, we keep getting hit by the consequences and it, it's, it just, it spins us, right? And it's horrible. So, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I'm gonna give you ladies some foresight, and and my little joke on that is, if hindsight is twenty twenty, then foresight is forty forty, right? So let's give you some forty forty vision. Let's empower you to go online and open some more doors. Uh, Raquel is so skeptical with online dating. I would love suggestions. That's right. Tune in next Tuesday, Raquel. We are going to get all up in that business on online dating, and I'm going to teach you also about the five love languages why it's important and and actually this is going to be one of those things that you're going to do you know with with people that you're considering i'd love to see you talk about the five love languages and really start talking about love and seeing where that's going early on in in your dating so we're going to get into that for sure next tuesday guys i love you this is so much fun i am having a blast i hope you guys are i know you guys are i'm not even saying i hope you guys are having fun i know you're having fun so thank you for coming. Thank you for taking part in this. I'll see you next Tuesday where the topic is how to make a bomb diggity online dating profile and how to understand how the five love languages works for you. I love you guys. Good night. Sleep well. Do your meditation. And if you haven't started yet, go to my YouTube channel and start. All right. Good night, you guys.